I first met Teresa roughly about 30 years ago. Uh, my father and her grandfather were very good friends. I actually go back to uh, Teresa's grandfather. Her grandfather established Dominic's restaurant. Their gift of food meant love. And I think as a child, she just learned that that's the way you show love. We all know we're from Dominic's, but uh, when I ran for honorary mayor of San Pedro, I had an opportunity to pick four nonprofits, and Pedro Pep House was one of my nonprofits. Teresa accomplishes a lot with Pedro Pep Pals. It's um, hard to define. You have to kind of start back to how Pedro Pep Pals was established. The LA City had built this beautiful new shelter that we're sitting in right now. And unfortunately, I think there was a miscommunication as to the environment and our weather here. And um, it was very, very hot. The animals were not happy. When they built the shelters, they put canvases up that were retractable, and they weren't durable. The roll-away material was just not working for the dogs, especially during heavy rains. It was uh, scared the dogs uh, in the kennels and caused some flooding. So for two years, we fought to have permanent roofing put on. She was just calling the department saying, I know Joe Buscaino, I know him, he's now our councilman, and by the way, he supports Pedro Pen Pals, and she did everything she can, and, and it was a win for not only the dogs, but also for the department and for the city. And now these covers are being installed throughout the city of Los Angeles. When the shelter was built, basically I, I wrote her a check to support the misting system. And a few months afterwards, she uh, called me up to say that the city was actually going to fund the misting system themselves. And uh, did I want my money back? And I said, no, keep it, use it for some other good cause. So that led to a conversation where we decided that we would found an organization called Pedro Pet Pals, which is a small group of uh, dedicated people who like to support the animals and the shelter here. We supply the animals in our community with stuff that people can't afford, medications, we supply the shelter with equipment. Our animals come in sometimes in a horrendous mess. So we purchase grooming stuff, shampoos, whatever they needed. We've redone the cat room three times because as far as the cat goes, it was just cats in a cage. They had no nowhere to climb, nowhere to stretch out. They had nothing. We've purchased dog kennels, dog toys, anesthesia machines for more spay neuters. We've also purchased a blood machine. We can do blood work right on the premises. More recently, we've done things like put together matching grads with SNP LA. I think SNP LA's program is fantastic. I can't stress enough how important spay neuter is. Kids and chihuahuas, unfortunately, are the highest population in our shelter. We've basically been able to fund the completely free spaying and neutering of over 700 pit bulls. I don't care if you had a pit or a pit mitt, you bring it in, no questions, you didn't have to show low income, I don't even care if you're Donald Trump, fix it. The public is not aware of what happens, and I think if they were educated more, they would have no problem spay or neutering their pets, because if you have somebody who doesn't have their pet fixed, and then that dog has puppies and puppies, they end up here, and that turns out to be a disaster. Teresa, in many ways, is inspiring, because if you think about all of the things that she's dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's her business or her family, she's still working on behalf of the animals. She has five dogs at home of her own, and a bird, and whatever else, and she rescues dogs, and when she can't find a home, she fosters other bulldogs. I got involved with Bulldog Rescue about 15 years ago. You just start laughing when you when you watch her with the Bulldogs because those dogs obviously love her. The woman cemented her house so there's no carpet so these dogs can be in her house. Who does that? It's something I've that witnessed she it has. firsthand. It doesn't matter what they are, what kind of animal it is. I've seen it where they've been discarded and nobody wants them. And they'll look at her and we witnessed it the other Many night times. with this yep. little dog somebody dumped on the side of the road and we were going to rescue it but it was too small for our dog and it just jumped on her lap and was like loving her to death it's like this i don't know the sky opens for them and it's like this love pours out of her um so with that said i mean for her to have pedro pet pals I don't think some people understand the passion that it takes to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the underdog. I come in, and, or the cat, or whatever animal we have that's 
not the best looking, maybe not the youngest, maybe they've had a hard time, but you know, with a little love and training, and they're fine. They make the best pets.